Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Hello students, we are in the process of designing feedback control system and so far we have seen uh, how do you answer the two first two questions. So let me recap, when you have to do, design a feedback control system, we start with the synthesis problem, where we select what are the control variables, what are the manipulated variables, how do you pair them and whether you pair them as a single input, single output controller or multi input, multi output controller. So all those decisions about the architecture of the control system are taken care of in the synthesis problem. Once the structure of the control system is finalized, then we move on to the second problem which is known as the selection problem. In this problem, we look at the individual control loops and then try to identify uh, within our current context uh, of linear controllers whether that particular controller should be P controller, PI controller or a PID controller. And then the most important or more frequently encountered problem is known as a tuning problem. So for a given PID controller, how do you select good values of the controller time controller constant gain, integral time constant and derivative constant depending on whether you are using a PI, P controller, PI controller or a PID controller. So how do you select the best values for these would be uh, would come under the context of tuning problem. So in order to give you a feel of what do I mean by best values, let us look at uh, this one example response wherein uh, I am showing you uh, a response of a temperature controller and this uh, is let us say this is a, a reactor which has to operate at a temperature of 500 uh, degrees Celsius and we have put in two controllers, a controller 1 uh, which uh, looks like a, a very over damped response and there is a controller 2 which uh, looks like an under damped response. Uh, both these are PID controllers and they are giving you different response. Uh, however, in the end both these controllers are able to achieve the response of uh, the temperature set point is reaching the uh, desired set point value. So if I ask you a question which controller uh, is better, so both these controllers have different KC, Tau I and Tau D and if I ask you a question which of these is better, uh, can you answer that question? So I would ask you to pause the video and try to give reason, uh, select one of these two as the best option out of these two and try to reason out, uh, I try to uh, write down uh, the, the reason why uh, you have selected it to be the best one. So I hope uh, you have thought about both these responses and try to compare them and then try to select which one is the best. And uh, let me uh, make a case for each of those uh, responses. So let us say uh, that uh, this uh, reaction would not start unless the temperature reaches 500 degrees or very close vicinity of 500, let us say 450 degrees up to that the system will not, the reaction would not start. So in the first, uh, for the first controller, uh, the 450 temperature would reach somewhere down here. So up to all this time, the reaction will not take place. So this is more like an idle time. Whereas in the second controller case, the temperature reaches the, in the neighborhood of the uh, final set point much quickly and therefore the reaction would get started much early, let us say somewhere here and therefore uh, you will have a very low idle time or a non-productive time, your profit, uh, the, your production would be high. So um, if that is my system, then looks like uh, the response 2 or the PID controller 2 is better than 1. Let me now give a different scenario for the same example and let us say that 
for this system if the temperature crosses 510 degrees it's detrimental for the system uh, the the way it can be detrimental is either the catalyst gets degraded or there is a reaction selectivity problem at 510 degrees some undesired product uh, gets selectively produced so your yield for the product goes down so if that is the case i would always in want to ensure that my temperature inside the reactor never crosses that value or i would not want such a high offset uh, or a high overshoot above the set point value so in that case my controller one turns out to be a better option so what i am trying to drive at is that um, depending on the scenario or what depending on what is your requirement uh, controller one or controller two either one can be a better option so there is no right or wrong uh, in a very general sense all you are interested in defining certain criteria so for uh, this particular example if my criteria is that i want a very fast response then and irrespective of any overshoot uh, then uh, my controller 2 becomes a better one but if i say i don't want any overshoot uh, in that case uh, the controller 1 becomes a better one so all i am trying to get at is this tuning or the selection of the controller parameters heavily depends on what is my notion of being a best response so this is what we will use while developing this tuning methodologies so typically uh, when you design uh, any controller there are different uh, aspects which you would want the controller to have so i have listed down few of those aspects so let us see what are those uh, first and foremost whenever you install a controller uh, the first thing you would want is the controller should not destabilize the process and we have uh, looked at it uh, uh, when we talked about the stability analysis that there is always a limit on controller parameters up to which you can maintain stable operation so irrespective of whatever is the type of a system you would never want your controller to destabilize the process so one of those criteria can be to ensure stable operation the other one would be uh, in respect to the offset we would definitely want to have a very minimal offset and most of the times uh, if it is a temperature control or a flow uh, <coughs> control or pressure control uh, in some cases you would want zero offset because you want to maintain that particular set point then as we saw for the react uh, the previous example you may have a requirement that the response should be quick uh, in some cases uh, you may requirement may be small overshoot the requirement may be about small oscillations uh, and then there are some more quantitative terms uh, like uh, integral of square error and we will look at uh, these last three criteria in more detail when we talk uh, about the methodology so all in all there are a lot of uh, different criteria which you can put on the closed loop response of the system and uh, you would realize that uh, not all of these uh, requirements can be met by a single controller a lot of times these are mutually exclusive for example if you want to improve the speed of response or if one of your objective is quick response in that case uh, the oscillations in the system increase uh, we have seen that uh, when we analyzed under response of an under second order under dam system so uh, if you, i want to improve the speed of response then obviously i have to give away in terms of the oscillations so the bottom line is all these cannot be simultaneously satisfied so we have to pick the ones which are of interest or which are most important for the process and then we go forward in terms of designing the system so broadly uh, if i want to uh, the type of approaches which we are going to see for controller tuning uh, are these uh, one is a criteria based tuning the second one would be heuristic tuning third one would be more of a model based control strategy where we uh, talk about direct synthesis based pid controller tuning or imc based controller tuning and lastly we will make use of frequency response to get a very robust uh, pid controller tuning so let us start with uh, the criteria based tuning as it is the most uh, or the simplest one to understand and uh, when i say criteria based controller tuning what we are going to do is we are going to select few of the criteria from the list which i had given you earlier and then uh, have a closed loop transfer function for the system in terms of the pid control or whichever is your uh, 
controller of choice and then you solve those equations to maintain that criteria. So these various type of criteria can be written down. So let us uh, which can be broadly classified into three <coughs> types of criteria. <coughs> The first type uh, are known as the steady state criteria. So which would include you would want or the steady state criteria uh, means you are only going to look at the final response of the system. So based on the final response uh, requirement from the controller. Uh, these criteria would be set, uh, so one of those would be minimum offset. So offset you would typically get uh, when the response steadies. So one of the criteria can be to have a minimum offset and uh, zero offset would definitely mean that you have to either use a PI or a PID controller. The other one can be stable response. So we have seen that uh, stability again uh, eventually is governed by the steady state finally whether the system response is bounded or unbounded. So again uh, this becomes the steady state criteria that my controller tuning should give you stable response. The other type of uh, criteria are dynamic criteria using few points. So here we will look at the actual trajectory of the output as a function of time and then have certain criteria on the type of response or the value of the response at certain important points. So to ex give you some example, it may be about rise time and smaller rise time. So one of the criteria may be very fast uh, reach uh, the steady state has to be reached uh, very quickly and uh, we have seen the difference between rise time and response time. So when I say rise time being smaller it means the reactor or the output reaches the set point value or in the neighborhood of the set point value very quickly. It may not stay there but the first time it reaches that set point value um, that will kind of govern that the process has been moved to the in the neighborhood of the set point. So the, having a smaller rise time generally gives you a quick response. So that can also be a criteria and here you are looking at only one point out of the response. So rise time is calculated based on the uh, time instant when the output first reaches the set point value. So it is based on a single point of the dynamic response. The other one can be smaller overshoot. It can also be based on decay ratio and very common criteria which is used is quarter decay ratio. So you want the oscillations inside the system to die down very quickly. So one of the very popularly used criteria is a quarter decay ratio. <coughs> So if is, this is the response of a controller then you would want that the C over A should be less than 1 by 4. <coughs> so you can uh, see that uh, if this is my criteria and we have already uh, seen that uh, and then the last type <coughs> of criteria are again dynamic criteria but they are based on entire trajectory. So it looks at overall how does the controller uh, perform in terms of tracking the set point or maintaining the set point.
so if this is the set point and if this is the response so it is going to capture these are going to capture how much is the deviation from the set point so all these represent a deviation from the set point so ideally the controller should have maintained the output along this y set line which is uh, not uh, practically possible so any deviation from this value is going to give you an error so these uh, criteria are based on minimizing this error and there are different ways uh, this error can be quantified <coughs> so one of those uh, is ise or integral of square error so ise you would define as an integral over the entire trajectory of squared errors where epsilon t <coughs> will be y set minus y <coughs> so you would try to calculate how much is the overall deviation from this set point value as a function of trajectory so the more amount of uh, the more this trajectory is closer to the set point smaller will be the integral of squared errors similarly uh, iae is also defined as integral of absolute error so iae will be defined as integral over the entire trajectory of absolute error <coughs> now you may uh, want to say that both these are equivalent uh, the difference between the two is uh, these ISE or integral of squared errors would penalize large errors because uh, if the error is small then the square of the error becomes even smaller so ISE tends to penalize large errors only and in order to penalize the smaller errors you would define a integral of absolute error however both these methods are not going to account uh, for how long the error was there in the system indirectly it is account, uh, accounted because you are taking an entire integral over the entire trajectory but if you do not if you want the error to go or decay very quickly then a third type of criteria is defined which is known as integral of absolute error time averaged error so itae will be defined as t times epsilon t dt so if the error remains for a longer time uh, then the penalty will be more so it will tend to penalize persistent errors so these are the different criteria which uh, somebody might enforce and now what is now let us look at what is the relationship between having a criteria and the end goal of finding what are the values of controller parameters we have not at all seen how how is this related uh, to tuning the controller so what you end up doing is uh, you select a criteria and then accordingly uh, let us say if your criteria was so for example criteria was quarter decay ratio then we know that decay ratio is for a second order system uh, given by minus twice zeta over root of 1 minus zeta square or it's a function of damping coefficient smaller is the damping coefficient uh, larger will be the uh, decay ratio <coughs> 
So what you would end up doing is uh, you would specify the value of damping coefficient into your closed loop transfer function equation uh, which will give you what is the required value of the damping coefficient and for a controller this damping coefficient will be a function of Kc tau i and tau d. So once you get this damping coefficient you can put it here and then you will get one relationship uh, between the controller parameters. So every criteria will give you one relationship. <coughs> so one criteria gives you one relationship between controller parameters. So by having multiple such criteria depending on how many parameters you have, you may get uh, a number of equations in these control uh, variables uh, with uh, these controller parameters as variables and we can solve them to find out the best values of the controller parameters which are going to satisfy these uh, performance <coughs> specifications. So that is how uh, one would end up tuning a controller using criteria based method. However, uh, what you would realize uh, is that uh, this is turns out to be a very time consuming exercise uh, because uh, this uh, for the, uh, let us say if I have to use the quarter decay ratio then what you are going to have is that uh, you would require a relationship between damping coefficient and decay ratio and you would also require a relationship between controller parameters and uh, a damping coefficient. So a lot of uh, process uh, transfer function information is required. Uh, you have to do lot of mathematical um, <coughs> rearrangement and equation solving to eventually come up uh, with uh, the values of the controller parameters. So it turns out to be very time consuming and when you are operating a plant you may not want to be spending your time uh, going through all this rigorous uh, algebra and you would really want to have some easy uh, way uh, to get these controller parameters given uh, the information about the process. So what you would ideally want is <coughs> so as an as a practicing engineer you would want if my process is let us say first order plus dead time how are my Kc tau i and tau d related to the process parameters if I select some performance criteria. So when you want to narrow down your problem something like this then you rely on someone else to carry out a, a lot of experiments or mathematical analysis for you for this kind of a system and then give you some quick uh, formulas where you can plug in the values of Kp tau y and uh, K, <coughs> Kp tau and Td and then get the values of corresponding PID controller. This is exactly done uh, by using what is known as a heuristic controller tuning where there are a set of heuristic rules uh, which, uh, which are available in literature uh, which uh, also tell uh, what are the performance criteria which they have used and they will help you in terms of uh, design, uh, deciding the value, best values of Kc tau y and tau d. <coughs> so we will take a short break here and when we come back uh, we will look at uh, how do you go about tuning uh, using this heuristic controller tuning rules. Thank you.